Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Museum of Graffiti. Uh, my name is Alan Kett. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, the reason why we're here today is to welcome a new exhibition to the museum uh, by Layer Cake. Layer Cake is uh, on my left, a duo of Christian and Patrick. Um, they've come all the way from Germany. Uh, and to present a new exhibition called The Process Project 3. And so we're very excited to present that work today. Um, the Museum of Graffiti, as uh, an art institution, really strives to present the work of artists with a graffiti writing background uh, to celebrate their, their work, their history, their past and their future, and the work that you'll see today at their exhibition is all of that and much more. I just want to acknowledge a few people that have helped to make this happen. Beyond the Museum of Graffiti's uh, tremendous team that worked very hard to make it all happen. Uh, thank you, Lexi, Jamie, um, Carolyn, uh, Ali, and, and everybody else that's in the house, uh, and Vinny as well. Uh, we also wanted to thank our sponsors, which help us fund these exhibitions. And so in this case, Rip It uh, is one of our sponsors. Urban Nation from Berlin uh, very generously sent these two great gentlemen that you'll meet in just a moment as representatives uh, as well. And the German consulate uh, here in Miami as well, the Consulate General of Berlin or Germany is here as a supporter as well. And so we thank them very much for making this happen and for bringing us all together tonight. And so without further ado, I'm going to present our friends from Urban Nation uh, and Brooklyn Street Art to, uh, to kick us off. Great, thank you. Uh, just let me talk for a second. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you so much for being here. I also want to say thank you to Alan, Alison, and, and the wonderful team at the Graffiti, at the Museum of Graffiti. It's great to be here. And thank you, you all, for coming. We love you. You all look great tonight. Steven is going to moderate the, um, this uh, talk. So he's going to ask some questions to the artists. Alan, and then we're going to invite you to ask some questions as well, and um, just relax and enjoy the show. Yeah. Yay. Thank you, Jaime. I'm Steve Harrington. This is Jaime Rojo. We're from Brooklyn Street Art. Tonight we're here as ambassadors for Urban Nation Museum in Berlin, who we've been associated with since 2015 as members of the curatorial board and we've curated shows there. Uh, we're also uh, both founding uh, members of the Martha Cooper Library there, um, which we plan to grow to be the largest collection of graffiti and street art and urban art materials in the world uh, to be a research uh, library for anyone in the world, it will also be eventually available online, but right now you can go to the Martha Cooper Library, and we're very proud also to be associated with Layer Cake, who has done two shows in our special projects room adjacent to the museum in the last two years with the Versus Project. Um, and Jaime and I are very thankful to be here at the Museum of Graffiti. We're thankful to Alan and to Allison for hosting us and the entire team. Uh, you named a few, and, uh, and there are a few others who have been so helpful to us. We're really uh, honored to be in an institution like this because we recognize how difficult it is to make the path by walking, which is exactly what Alan has been doing um, on his own and with help from others. Uh, so I'm, I'm thankful to all of these individuals. And so tonight we're going to learn a little bit about the show that's in the back, which is the third iteration of the Versus Project. Uh, and first I thought we could learn a little bit about Christian and Patrick. Uh, 
a little bit about your background. Both of you guys are writers in <coughs> Munich, right? Right? Are you, are you Berlin-based? Sort of? No, you're no. We all, are, all Munich. We are, yeah. Go ahead. We are um, Munich-based, um, even though often it's mentioned that we are Berlin-based. Yeah. <laughs> but you're we are not. from Munich. No, we are often okay. in Berlin, but um, sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Munich is more. Um, yeah, all the other arenas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Munich is more like FC Bayern and Oktoberfest, maybe. Right. Yeah. Which are beautiful cultural institutions yeah. that I like to partake in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you're both originally from Munich. You're currently in Munich. Were you team graffiti writers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we were graffiti bombers in the in the nineties, and that's where we met. And okay. Yeah. Were you part of a crew? Actually, not, not. But we painted together. We yeah. So you were a crew already. You became one. Yeah, we, we now became a crew. Okay, officially <laughs> you're. Yeah, yeah you're officially a, now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you knew each other when you were teenagers. How did Layer Cake uh, congeal? How did you get this decision to begin? Go ahead. And then it was like um, we, we studied in different cities, both studied design, um, so we didn't uh, see each other for a few years, but I think uh, nearly eight or nine years ago uh, we met again in Munich because we lived in the same area. And um, yeah, had some chats, met for some coffees, and realized we still have the same interest. And um, okay. that um, graffiti, urban art, post graffiti, or how you want to call it, is uh, still an important thing in both our lives. And um, I was working as an artist all the time. Christian had a design studio and was doing art as well. And at one of my exhibitions, I think we've been talking about um, the idea hey, let's, let's do a painting session together and just make a canvas together and see what's. Uh, what's the result of it? And yeah, we did that, and it was kind of, kind of like a jam session of two jazz musicians because it was like we've been a talking. Jam session. Jam. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the best word yeah. to describe it. Yeah. yeah, it was like we've been talking the whole evening right. about everything, but not about what we've been doing there, not about the painting at all. Get up and show your skills. Shut up. Let's see you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. and so, but the. The idea was that you knew that your styles were complementary to one another? We didn't do it, but we found out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then it was like, okay, this was fun. We both liked the result, let's do it again. And at one point I um, had a group exhibition in the gallery and um, the other artists had to quit because of some reason at the gallery, uh, the curator asked me um, to recommend some other artists. And I said, of course, let's say Christian because I'm working with him right now. It will fit okay. very well. Okay. And at that at that point, we didn't call us uh, layer cake, so there was no title, no official crew. But after this first exhibition, we realized, hey, maybe there's it's, it's more than just a few painting sessions. Maybe we should do something with that, and really make something out of it. And then Christian came up with the idea um, to call it layer cake because of why is that, Christian? Yeah. Where did you get that name? Yeah, it from? was really simple because um, it was. Clear because it were so many layers, and then I asked Patrick if he knew the movie Layer Cake, and he was like, "Yeah, no, let's let's call us Layer Cake then." So that's how we. How many people here have seen Layer Cake, the movie? Okay. So you're somewhat <laughs> familiar with the the technique, the credo. So. <laughs> there's some familiarity with yeah, one yeah. Layer Cake. There's one big familiar thing yeah. because when the our paintings, which we did together. We didn't have names for them, so we took the whole cast from the movie, like um, <laughs> Kilburn, and John, whatever. <laughs> Frankie Four Fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Turkish. Okay. So and then we uh, took Snatch and all, all these this, uh, movies of that genre. So yeah, that's how we came up with our. There was not a big idea behind it. It was, it was just, just fun, actually. So, it was just fun. Yeah. We just liked it. it yeah, the best projects started. It, what? The best projects start with having fun with. Oh, I think so too. When I stumble into things, that's when I'm a genius. It's when I plan them yeah. out, I realize I'm exactly. far less creative than I thought I was. Exactly. So, um, but your styles are not, 
they're complementary, but they're quite different from one another. Is that true? Yeah. And uh, so, to the uninitiated, give me one word that would describe my stuff and Christian stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm expressive and dirty, and he is very graphic and clean. Expressive and dirty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. All right. Okay. And what's the other one? He said graphic and clean. Graphic and clean. Turned around because uh, since he is really fast in tagging, yeah. I had to speed up and got other tools. So I now have a spray gun and a couple of other stuff. Yeah. So I can comp compete against his speed. So it's, right. like a, it's like it's not a battle. It's it's a session, but still, um, yeah, I have to. Uh, yeah. It's a competition. Are you playing? <laughs> Are you playing this? Okay. Uh, uh, probably also just because you were a red-blooded male, uh, you were like, I want to be dirty once in a while, too. I, I can, I'm not just the clean one all the time. Uh, Alan, how did you find out about these guys? They they wrote me in. Oh, yeah. Very easy. Very because of the Carlos. Because of Carlos. And so, Carlos Mayer, who was working with us as a curator, um, is heavily involved as an artist in this sort of post graffiti mindset, right? And sort of breaking out from the traditional letter form and going other places with style writing. And so, I don't know if they knew each other, but uh, they approached Carlos with this concept, and then Carlos sent it over to me, and we started to have this dialogue. Uh, when Carlos left uh, the museum a few years back, we continued the dialogue because it was something that. Uh, I believed in, you know, I saw the work, it was okay. incredible and sort of where they were going for it. Yeah. And also beyond the work, just the idea of the work. This right. idea of uh, creating this improvisational sort of conversation with other painters to, to create a new body of work. And uh, I found it to be quite fascinating. And, and the artists that were involved weren't slouches, right? Ah. And so they, they all had sort of this, um, this street or graffiti pedigree, and they were quite established and, and stylistically. Right. And so I thought, well, th this is a very interesting sort of conversation that they're having, and, uh, and why not support their vision? Uh, after all, we do have this place, and we want to do that. So right. it was a no-brainer for us. So you liked the idea that it was a jam session? Yes. Where artists could give and take, be in the moment, so to speak, Create something new uh, with their work, and then you check the uh, the guest list, and you said, "Okay, but these are these are good, solid. These are experts. Yeah, these are these experts. These, these are experts. These are all expert painters yeah. with with a real history of painting. These are not a, a fly by nights, yes. overnight sensations, or something like that. Uh, who don't really have any." Uh, roots in this artistic movement and so we pride ourselves on working with people that are authentic to this art form and this movement and so they are themselves that but then also reaching out and branching out to others that are also uh, historical participants uh, in this movement so it made a lot of sense it was authentic it was yeah. fresh it was new yes. uh, and involved a sort of global uh, audience and a global conversation yes. and I thought for us here in Miami we would greatly, us the museum, but the audience here in Miami would greatly benefit mm -hmm. from seeing this work and, and speaking to them about it. Thank you. Do you think that this is uh, primarily European artists that you've been working with? Uh, so far I've seen the greater percentage has been uh, individuals who have been on the street, yeah, working on the street saying, yeah. in cities across Europe, uh, with the exception of a few Americans. Yeah. Anywhere else? Uh, Japan. Yeah, Japan. Japan. Right. Um, from the states. Um, X is from. No, Finland. Finland. So Finland. Scandinavia. Yeah. Scandinavia. Um, yeah, it's true. Like you said, it's most of them are from Europe. I think that's just, we didn't think about that too much. It, it was, yeah. of course, it's a point for us to, 
you know, have, have people from different locations and different cultures because it just makes it more interesting. Yeah. But in the end, the first point was like, it's, 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 we, it has to be someone we really like to work with as a yeah, person. Absolutely. Uh, just, we, we want to work with nice guys and nice ladies, you know. Yeah. And the second thing is, of course, we had to like the work they do so uh, with the solo works. Yes. So I, don't, I wouldn't invite someone whose, whose work I don't like personally. And okay. the third thing I think was from 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 making our art books and creating other shows, um, we had some experience um, with with which artist is easy to work with and who is getting very complicated and dramatic. Do people know this that a lot of times you get picked because you're easier to work with? <laughs> you wouldn't think that would be the first criterion, but it kind of ranks right up there. It's pretty, it's pretty high, right? It's, it's a pretty high criteria. Uh, who wants to work with someone difficult? I mean, only if it's like the most famous person in the world, yeah. maybe you'd want to consider that. Yes. But You'll pay the price. you pay the price and, and bite the bullet, but you know, when you work, you want to have some ease in your work. And if it's supposed to be fun, then you'll make it fun. Actually, we also have to find out how some artists yeah, how it is to work with them. Well, you don't so we necessarily write know books about it. this. How, how, how to yeah. work with artists. It's like right. this. <laughs> uh, my personal credo is never work with artists. <laughs> uh, we're going to take call, We're going to take questions at the end of our talk, and I, I can't wait to hear what uh, questions people will have. Um, so, aside from people who are good quality, uh, you are familiar with their work. And um, they have a reputation for delivering. Yeah. Yeah. That's really important. That's really important. We, we were talking about the dynamic earlier where uh, traditionally graffiti artists, psychographic uh, portrait would be someone who's rebellious, maybe is uh, against the establishment, maybe against the man. Who knows? You can generalize. I don't want to generalize too much. But the funny thing about being an artist who's now managing a project of other artists is you become the man. You become the father figure who they might be rebelling against. Where <laughs> That's so true. Right? Previously, you were Some peers. <laughs> you were like, we're the same. We're brothers. And then suddenly, you're like, you're an asshole. <laughs> what do you mean? It's you not that this? bad. <laughs> what do you mean you need, need this by the twentieth? The, yeah. the the show isn't until like the thirtieth. Why do you need it so early? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you said, you know, it's exactly because of this. We are in first place artists and not curators, and maybe this is why we set our own goal. So and. Uh, of course, we want to have fun with all our projects. Why? Yeah. I, mean, I became an artist because I want to fun, have fun with my work and enjoy my work. And um, yeah, why should it make it hard for myself? But maybe it would be different if, if we just be just, but if we, if we would be curators from a museum without yes. being artists ourselves, right? Maybe then the goal would have been okay. Let's get the biggest names and everything. This is uh, this is the, the the main point. Right. But um, yeah, like I said, we are artists uh, in the first place, and we want to enjoy that. And it's about the painting. So if you have bad vibes, how how do you want to to deliver a good painting? Anymore? Did you want to add to that, Christian? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to say yeah. one thing that, yeah. um, like, when you work with artists, yes. you learn that sometimes you have to have some, give them some, or have in mind that you have some extra deadlines. So you tell them you need your the, the, the work by December, and you know that actually you need it by the mid of right. January. But usually, even this doesn't really work. <laughs> Set the deadline. He's talking early. about himself. Yeah. yeah. Set the deadlines early. Right. Yeah. But, but it the, didn't work out 100%, so it's you have right. to be a pain. Yeah. Okay, but you have a full <laughs> show out there. Yeah, it of worked. Course. Yeah. One the of end. the pieces, I think, the paint is still wet, but it's there. Yeah. Everything is there, That's right? That's so true. The paint was wet, and after that, we, pa we packed everything and sent it over. Yeah. The paint was still wet when, when the cops arrived. So that being said, you have some incredible collaborators during these past three sessions. Um, in this session, uh, 
you know, I don't like to play favorites, but we all know that there are some names that are more notable or, or better known than others. You have Hera uh, from Hera Cups. You have Rocco and his brothers. Flying Fortress. Flying Fortress. Um, Various and Gould is, has been carving out their own niche um, in, you know, the, the mind space. Who else have you had that um, we might be familiar with? Mad C. Mad C. Of course. Um, in the, the previous two In the previous shows, Chess for Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so, yeah. And, um, it's it's all the so next, and X was very X from Helsinki is yeah. a really it's, yeah, very important part of the European species. How about Mick LaRock? Mick LaRock, yeah. Right? One yeah. of the first female yeah. in the first you know, in the 90s. Yeah. She's represented in the building, you said? Yeah. Around the corner, you can see Mick LaRock in the building. Okay. Bisco Smith. Flying Fortress is right over there. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Dave the Chimp, yep. he's a very important artist from London. So like one of the, the first um, street artists there. Really nice guy. Dave the Chimp is one of the first street artists from London? Definitely. He, he, it's, he, in, an, in an interview he recently said that someone said that he was the first street artist in London. Which is... Alright, yeah. debatable. Okay. Yeah, but, but it's, I get the press yeah. releases too. Yeah, but yeah. I, imagine, <laughs> I imagine in 2000 two in London, yeah. and there wasn't much going on there, but he was one of the active guys, his side Banksy, of course. Right. So there's Banksy, Dave the Chip. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. Okay, there's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. Um, I just want to make sure there's nobody else that I didn't mention from the previous two iterations. Uh, that I thought was remarkable and I'm, I'm blanking on that. To me, of course, since I'm uh, coming from the calligraphy side, yes. um, of course, Sefa, Uzubro, Chess Bjorkas have been most interesting for me because, you know, as calligrapher, you want to see their work in real and see how sharp the strokes are and everything, and also the quality if you see it live. And yes. To me, these have been the most interesting artists from the, from the lineup since we started. Jake? Uh, Jake? Yeah, Jake of course. Jake from Amsterdam, yeah, really. really famous okay. bomber for many years. So it really spreads across a number of the uh, disciplines, if you will, in, in the graffiti world and the street art world as well. Where else have you taken this, uh, taken your show? Did you say Denver? No, Denver was a group show. Uh, it was a group show. Uh, of the Versus Project. Right. Um, yeah, but uh, in September, early September, we will be um, at some liminal space in Los Angeles. Yes. And um, that's right. that will be the next show. The uh, Shepherd Fairies. Uh, exactly. Gallery, so right? we will do a painting of him as well for the show. Great. And, um, yeah, we're in touch with Goldie right now and talking about another show in Bangkok. Fantastic. Well, I'll go with you to Bangkok. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I haven't checked that out yet. Uh, but Rocco and his brothers, can you tell us a little bit about Rocco and his brothers? Because it sounds like there are probably eight of them, right? Do you want to talk about him? Because uh, he's, yes, uh, so he's in this show, it's on metal, and the metal is actually... Yeah, so um, Rocco and his brothers are, um, it's a crew, like, and there's one guy who's like the head of it. Okay. Um, but actually it's a crew because some, most of the projects wouldn't be able to just one person and um, they are really um, active uh, train bombers from Berlin they are um, part of the most important crews in Berlin but they are really good in closing the gap between graffiti and street art because they do a lot of street art projects like okay. uh, political and satirical things and really okay. good and with a lot of impact got a lot of attention from the police and did they live other. inside of a train station in a hidden compartment yeah they did this um, this apartment like off the grid they snuck into a part of a municipal building in the train station found the electricity <coughs> set up a bedroom lamps you know end yep. tables 
and uh, and lived there for a while. As uh, no, I don't know if they lived there, but um, they got really famous for this for this because yeah. um, uh, someone someone noticed it, and then there was this big news in, in German TV and newspapers that there was an apartment where someone lived, and no one knows what it is about. And yes. so it's really crazy. And yeah. So they're, they're conceptual artists as exactly, well. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And they make they make shit happen. So <laughs> oh, we like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, that was um, one of the quotes Disco Smith told us when we had our first conversation. He was like, "Oh yeah, you guys make shit happen." Yeah. But no, no, it, you guys are fucking fucking executors. You make shit happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, but the funny thing is that um, Rocco and his brothers they also make shit happen because yeah. um, there's one story about this metal piece because yeah. actually we just sent them a canvas and they didn't send it back for ages and, and we had the deadline come close and close and he was yeah. like yeah, yeah I'm going to make it and I'm sending it over to you in December and at the, in the last week of December I called him and I was like yeah when are you going to send back the, the canvas and he was like yeah I still have a part of Subway in my bunker which I'm going to send you and I was like okay how how can you send this to us and he was like yeah I put it on the um, train in Berlin and you are taking it out in Munich so no problem <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> okay <laughs> and in the end we got it um, delivered but um, yeah and it's a piece yeah. of Metal. the subway train yeah a heavy piece <laughs> from Berlin <laughs> That is this, you know, it's but bright the, yellow. It still has the the insignia of the train system on it, some identifying coding. Yeah. So uh, it's not like it's been bumped out. That's down. the way they think. Like they just, yeah. just go for it. And they're like, it's no problem. It's easy. You can do it. <laughs> Grab it and go. And so, um, how many times did this piece of metal go back and forth between you and Only once. Just one time. Only once, but it uh, left an, a lot of damage in one car where it didn't fit in because they didn't measure it, and it was a lot of big pain. Yes. Okay. Well, and I imagine it's heavier than your average. Uh, I think you know, the point is that for the robbers, their work was not to paint on the on the, on the piece of metal. It was just to deliver. To provide the metal, right. Because of this, to me, it was not necessary to send it back and forth a few times. Yes. In this case, because it was like, hey, it's, you know, Rocco style, we get a we get a something summer, what do you want? What do you want more? So it's fine for us. So you have different personalities, you have different working styles, you have uh, perhaps different uh, ways of communicating with one another. You were talking about various and Gould, who you know, they're, they're well, they're, they're in Berlin, right? What, what happened when you sent them the canvas? Yeah. It's, a, it's a man and, uh, it's, a, it's a couple, it's a man and... Yeah. I know them for, actually I know them for like 15 years or yeah. so, and I suggested that we um, should send them a, a, a canvas and yeah. We, we sent it over. They actually they got one in some really difficult colors in yellow and green, and we thought that it's easy for them to handle. But in the end, they were like when they got it, they were and they were like, okay, this is green and yellow. What are we going to do with this? So they added we hate orange. <laughs> yeah, they, they were polite, but actually I, I can imagine that they probably hate it. But, um, yeah, they sent it back with them. Um, they added orange. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was really interesting, but in the end, we are super happy with the result. And they are as well. And they, they are as well, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, you know, when I think about this project, I think about this, um, uh, the Surrealists in 1915, 1920, created this sort of parlor game, something you could play in the living room or in your kitchen with each other called Exquisite Corpse. Um, and, uh, you know, it's basically a hundred years old. You, you get a piece of paper, you fold it four ways, you draw what you like, and um, you have two minutes to draw it. And then the bell goes off and you pass it to the person to the right. And then that person takes what you've drawn, just a little piece of it, they can't see the whole thing and draws what they want to. And at the end, you have this collaborative piece 
um, and it's done very quickly. It's very stream of consciousness, and um, I wonder when you told people, "Here's your your canvas." What rules did you have for them? None. It's like in the end, uh, I think I wrote the one sentence in every email to every artist. It's like do it, do do what you want with it. Cook it in a pot of black ink. It doesn't matter to us. Overpaint ninety percent. Cut the half of layers. Doesn't matter. That's what it's about. So surprise us, you know, yeah. because. The, the, the whole layer cake thing or the, 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 the kind of, of uh, collaboration we are working with Christian, to me it felt like it's bringing both of us out of our comfort zone. Yes. And um, we started to do things we never would have done alone. Right. So, and um, like I said in an interview, I think uh, collaborations can bring something completely new, completely different, you know, different right. than, than the work of both. Uh, both parties, and um, that's what we wanted to achieve. So there was no no reason to, to give them any rules. So the, the only rule was you need to be a graffiti writer. For the purposes of the project, there were no rules, and uh, and that always worked out to your satisfaction. Totally, pretty much, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So it's just the spirit of uh, ingenuity, creativity, allowing each other the space to create. Um, sometimes when I think about the early graffiti days, I think of the sort of uh, repetitive recreation of a tag. But in fact, as I educated myself more, I learned that there were a number of artists who stretched themselves and there was there was a place for growing and there was almost uh, an expectation at some point to not do the same thing. Can you speak on that? At sure. All? I mean, I think that when we think of the, the 50 year history of this movement, we can mark it in one way with innovation. And there have been innovators historically in this movement that sort of shift the direction of the art, sometimes stylistically, sometimes with the process, right. but these people go down in history for not necessarily following the trend mm -hmm. or following sort of the, the group mindset and sort of breaking away from it. And so we see people like Futura uh, 2000 as one of those people. Uh, today we're talking about John Juan yeah. as one of those people. Some people would say Vulcan, New York, uh, or maybe we were talking about Shu mm -hmm. in Holland as another one of these people. And so definitely going against the sort of the the grain right. and, uh, and then just doing their own thing. But that gives you know, it takes a lot of courage uh, to, to to break away from the pack and find your way your own way when you might be ridiculed for it or not accepted for it. So, uh, but now, you know, in hindsight, we celebrate those people. Uh, you think we celebrate them because they created a new path or because they were brave? Like, we, we were talking about Futura uh, earlier today, and I know that he told me that when he was first doing trains uh, that were not like anyone else's trains, he took a lot of crap from people. And uh, so he took it from his peers, he took it from people who just thought you're wasting the paint, why are you doing this? He also took it from the, um, the, the art elite, the educated institutional type people who said, this is just like the abstract impressionists, basically you're just recreating something that you, know, you can go and see in the Metropolitan Museum. And, um, and Futura was like, I've never been there. I don't know the name that you just mentioned to me. This just came out of me. Um, so he was getting heat from a number of different directions, but he stuck with it. And, and that's the case with all these artists. A lot of these artists are self-taught. They're not studying art. They're, they're started as teenagers, you know, working in the street or on the trains. And so they're not necessarily 
to pull these references, they're just sort of spontaneously creating what they're feeling. Yeah. And there might be this sort of feeling in the world that they're sort of grasping or, or right. it, that resonates with them, that's channeled through them, and they just create. And sure, for the rest of the community that might not have that feeling or not you know, tuned in, it seems preposterous yeah. and ridiculous and sort of uh, not intuitive. And so, and, I, and I've been one of those people where I didn't understand why Vulcan, as an example, was gluing styrofoam on the side of the train right. in 1987 or 1988. Just found it to be goofy and preposterous, but he had a different vision. You know, he, he saw something that most of us didn't see, um, and that made him different and special, maybe an outlier. And, and I think those outliers, at the time, they might seem to not fit in. But in hindsight, we can look at them and say, well, wait a minute, they were challenging something, and if they stuck with it enough, and it wasn't just a one-off sort of uh, uh, by chance situation, yeah. uh, they sort of started to shine through, and we could look back at them and say, okay, there was an intentional shift created by this person who wasn't happenstance, right. and, uh, and then maybe celebrate that accomplishment. So maybe they pushed us forwards. Yes. Uh, so guys, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that we have um, about the process, about the um, perspectives that you have uh, gained in this process because I think that it is, um, it's an act of courage to give of yourself to work with someone else's uh, abilities and also to react to it um, and, to, and to try to keep this project moving forward. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Great. So, before you started collaborating with each other, did you always think of collaborating with other artists? Because now, now, because now that's what you're doing. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. see, that was that was your idea when you guys came together. No, no, no. It wasn't your idea at all, but. Um, when I look back, I always loved teamwork, I guess, and um, you're always strong enough to get out in the moment. And I always did a lot of projects um, with, uh, with, with other guys, and so I always had a good spirit, I guess. But, um, you know, this really came on coincidence that I... So my opinion, you're both attracted to other people's imagination. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, on top of your imagination. Yeah. Because obviously you guys have your own, but having what, was it nine artists? Eleven artists? Ten. 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 So that you guys collaborate with, so obviously you, you guys are attracted to those type of people yeah. that, have that, that collaborate with your art. So did you always think that way when you guys came together? Or was it something that just came from out of nowhere that you know what? Let's collaborate with this person, let's collaborate with this person. That's great, thank you. I, I think it was also because of the book projects which we did, because there we um, connected to that other was the first idea. No, 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 it was not the first idea. Actually, the, the first idea that was, uh, was what Patrick just said, that we both like teamwork, and, and I would add that we are fascinated by what other artists do and like their work. So it was like the, the logical consequence of this because we did book projects where we worked with other artists and we, we both liked the, the person behind the art and it's really interesting to see how they, how they are. How, so how it, was, it was an idea that became well, something yeah, for everybody else. Well, I'd, yeah. like to, I'd like to ask anybody else if they have a question. Yeah, or Does same. anyone else have a question that we'd like to uh, address? Because I know we're going to have a a great opportunity after this to um, ask questions in person and speak. Obviously, the guys are, are uh, very excited to meet you, to talk about the work. Um, also, I understand there's perhaps some layer cake. There's a few things happening tonight. So you get to see a great exhibition. Uh, please join us in, in talking. To, uh, to pack and Christian if you're here. There's a bar with great drinks uh, sponsored by Mikampo Tequila and Rip It. Uh, and we have a layer cake in the back. 
And so there is a tiered cake of you many flavors covered in paintings. A big surprise, and, and of course, we'll be music and mingling and talking. And so join us for some drinks, for some cake, to talk about art. And, and in case you have you've noticed, all these paintings that are that are cycling through the screen are the works of Layer Cake collaborating with other painters. Some of them you see process, but you get to see. I'm not sure that Carlos Mayer is no, one of never, them. No. Uh, but right, and so but you see, you, you get to see the breadth of the work yes. that they've been working on for a number of years now, and it's much different when you see it on the screen than when you see it in person. And so you get to see uh, the texture, the layers uh, of, of all these artists coming together, which I think is quite wonderful and so rich and vibrant and vivid uh, that really sort of blows your mind. And so again, thank you so much for coming and for participating. Oh, we have a question. You guys familiar with LC? Yeah, yes. LC, right? Yes. Uh, uh, Tunisian calligraphy. Well, he does call himself calligraphy, even though some people find that uh, uh, that word problematic, I guess. But calligraphy and graffiti, and, and that's how he expresses it. We, we already worked with him when we did our book project, The Art of Writing Your Name, so we know him via email. And he's not yeah. yeah, he is. Well, um, on the behalf of Urban Nation, I want to thank Alan Kett and Allison for hosting us and for bringing these guys here. I'd be so glad to talk to you, and I know everybody here would be happy to speak with you. Thank you. Have a good night.